how this former consultant makes $15,000 a month in recurring revenue with his SaaS product. You'll be learning about what the product is, how he grew this product and about the founder himself. So we'll be covering Block Survey, and it's a privacy focused survey tool that helps companies run surveys that need data protection and privacy without any ads, trackers or cookies. They built Block Survey on the foundation of privacy using security with Web3 for identity. So this lets companies make informed decisions with confidence in a new era of data ownership and privacy. So the focus of Block Survey is really to target Web3 companies, as they have many unique data collection issues, such as token gating and collecting Web3 identities for use cases such as building whitelists, allow lists, airdrops, and holder surveys. And they've served over 500 customers and have facilitated more than 10 million submissions so far. In terms of their revenue split, 40% of that comes from enterprise clients, with 60% of it coming from individual users and small businesses. In terms of pricing, there's both an individual plant and an enterprise plan. For the individual users and small businesses, pricing starts at $29 a month. And for enterprise clients, they offer a done-for-you service that require SSO, custom integrations, and higher security compliance standards. So before we dive into the challenges of building in Web3 and the validation of the product, let's meet the founder. His name is Wilson Bright, and prior to this, he worked with Fidelity Investments as a quality assurance engineer and Wells Fargo Securities as a business systems consultant. But he really knew he wanted to build something. And so he had saved up a couple years of runway and Block Survey got started during a hackathon. This hackathon lasted three days. And on the third day, he went and launched it on Product Hunt. In terms of the tech stack used, Stacks blockchain was used for identity authentication and storage management, which is anchored to Bitcoin, providing end-to-end -end encryption. And Angular is used on the front end with Node.js on the back end. And for serverless, they used Cloudflare workers. Let's take a look at some of the challenges that Wilson has had building a Web3 product. The first and biggest one is that Web3 technology is limited in its acceptance and most people don't have an understanding of blockchain among non-Web3 businesses. Many traditional businesses are hesitant to accept Web3 solutions due to their perceived complexity and unfamiliarity with the underlying technology. And to overcome this challenge, the company has really focused on abstraction and focusing on showcasing the tangible value that Web3 brings to the table. And for customers, they don't have to even know they are using Web3 technologies. So Blockster Survey is really pushing the emphasis on the benefits that can be from using privacy centric solutions. Another challenge to Web3 has been that it's constantly changing because it is so new. And for their Web3 customers, another issue has been the constant churn as many of them are extremely new and have short lifespans. If you've gotten this far in the video, I'm sure you want to build your own micro SaaS. And I have a complete course on how to do so. And it's a step by step academy that's going to show you how to build, scale, in profit from your very own micro software as a service. There's a link in the description below, so make sure you check that out. If you're looking for some free ideas instead, I also have you covered with free micro SaaS ideas you can steal. There's also a link for this in the description below. So how did Wilson grow the product from the beginning? He did so by initially making the product free. With the free product, he was also requesting reviews and case studies to help build social proof. And then from there, about two to 3% of users upgraded to the paid plan. And once he got to 1k in monthly recurring revenue, he removed the free tier entirely so that you could filter out noise and focus on customers who saw real value in the product. From there, Wilson focused on product-led growth. And since surveys have a link sharing capability, there is a natural flywheel already built in. As more people share the product links for the surveys, it increases the brand visibility and drives organic traffic to the website. From there, customers are put through a funnel to help get them to convert. And that funnel is really going to push them to create their first survey and collect their first three responses as the first 20 responses are free and then they're going to nudge the users to upgrade to a paid plan to continue collecting responses and this product-led approach now counts for 10 to 15 percent of traffic and it's their main channel for growth in terms of other marketing methods traditional search engine optimization is used wilson has created a thousand plus survey templates all focused on low search volume keywords with zero competition and using llms to generate these survey templates at scale. Newsletter sponsorships are also used and Wilson pays about $100 a 
dollars per issue, focusing on smaller newsletters with audiences of a thousand to ten thousand. Lastly, cold outreach is used through LinkedIn, Twitter and email. It's more of a high touch conversion task, but it does have a higher conversion rate. And from there, prospects are going to book a demo. So this is going to conclude the video here on an awesome SaaS journey from Wilson and his product block survey. I'll leave a link in the description for the original source material for this article. And if you enjoyed this video, I would love it so much if you smash that like and subscribe button below. If you have any questions, leave a comment, but thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.